Stephanie Dobson is back with us this week. Stephanie is a lawyer and mediator here in Lloydminster at Hanka Divorce Law and Mediation. It's another episode of Healthy Thriving Family After Divorce. So we are in March now, Stephanie, and we are going to kind of stick to a, a different theme, I guess, every month. So this time we're going to be talking about creating a parenting schedule. And this is something that can be very difficult, as you are well aware, when you've got two homes and kids and everything's divided up. So basically, Stephanie, where can parents start when they're trying to do something like this? Well, there's, I sort of, I break it down into two different parts to any parenting schedule. So the first part, I would say, we'll call it the regular schedule. Um, and this is usually the school-based parenting schedule, sort of when nothing special particular is going on and kids are just doing their day-to-day -day routine, parents are doing their day-to-day -day thing. That's sort of what I call the regular schedule for most of the year. Then there's what I call the holiday schedule, which is sort of tip, uh, typical times of the year that you might want to break out into sort of something a little bit different. So today I thought we could focus on the regular schedule and then next week we can focus on how to build that holiday-based parenting schedule because there's kind of some different considerations. So generally when parents come in to meet with me, everyone's in a bit of a different stage. Some people have already been separated for a while and they're doing their own thing. They're already got a makeshift schedule themselves and some people really don't know where to start. And so Really, what I suggest is to first, when you're when you're at the very beginning of trying to figure out a schedule, generally you should try to figure out how you want those days to be broken up. So some families do, you know, weekdays versus weekends. Some try to say, let's keep the number of days in the month even. And so let's figure out how to break it up there. And some parents say, you know, we want to exchange the kids every few days. So first of all, start with some of those general concepts as to what you generally like to see in the schedule. Then we look at consistency. We always know that for kids, consistency and routine is really important. So if you want to try to create a, an, a consistent exchange day or even a consistent event, like after supper on a particular day instead of before supper, before bed, something like that. And then, of course, we want to layer on top of that the real practicalities like parents' work schedule, kids' school, daycare activity schedule, kind of what makes logical sense. On my website, um, people may want to go check out some resources. Um, there's a few different um, parenting plan kind of, um, I guess, workbooks um, that might help you to figure out um, how to build that parenting schedule. Now, when I do it, I always take what I call a developmental approach to building any parenting schedule. Well, let's expand on that, Stephanie. What does that mean? Well, usually parents come in kind of with their own ideas of how they want to do a schedule. Um, and I try to ask kind of how things have been going. So again, whether they've already been doing something or they're just trying to build something, sort of how has it been going? But when I say developmentally appropriate, what we want to really look at is things like the kids' ages, their stage of development, right? Are they potty training? Are they nursing still? Are they in preschool, um, you know, elementary teens, whatever? Um, their temperament? And even their ability to adapt to changes, because some kids really have a struggle going between two homes, um, and others really can flexibly do that. So, and, you know, even things like kids with special needs, right? Some kids have a really hard time with certain aspects of parenting in between two homes, or living with parents in two homes. So we really want to be mindful of each individual child and what their developmental age and stage is. So now when people are, I don't want to, when I say the term exchanging children, it sounds a little strange, but when you are yeah. going from two different homes, uh, what's a, a good way to, to uh, kind of arrange that? Because as you said, the kids needs should always come first. So what are some tips when trying to make that happen? Well, you know, exchanges, they say for children are one of, is one of the most stressful times. Um, and I define exchanges as, you know, that, that day or that time when they go from mom's house to dad's house or dad's house to mom's house. And so we know that um, it's not necessarily separation or divorce itself or living in two homes that's ne negative or detrimental to children's development. It's parental conflict and the effect and, you know, divorce as it goes along with that, that can be really difficult for children. And so 
very often kids will get sort of some stress buildup around that those exchanges, not only because they're going from one home to the other, they have to get used to the routines of one home, you know, leaving one home and then what, okay, what's the routine in the other parent's home? Or even, you know, I'm going to miss one parent, right? The parent I'm leaving, I'm going to miss them. When am I going to see them again? So there's a natural level of stress that already comes along with those exchanges. But what I always suggest is that the more conflict that there is between two parents, the more you're going to want to spell out the details about how that exchange is going to go. Because what we want to try to do is to prevent additional stresses over and above sort of the natural stresses that we can't necessarily control. So if we may kind of think about it along a continuum. So for example, you may want to arrange things like where is the exchange going to be? So the more the conflict, the more neutral the place you're going to want to be. The timing of the exchange, the more the conflict, the more you're going to want to set these things in stone ahead of time so you don't end up with a fight of, I want seven o'clock, no, I want six o'clock. Even things like who's going to be there, the more they'll conflict, the fewer the people that should attend those exchanges. How long will the exchange take? So the more the conflict, the shorter the exchange. I recommend for a really high conflict, you know, three or four minutes is sort of, you know, the max. Um, and then, of course, uh, the degree of the parental interaction. So the more the conflict, of course, the less the conversation that should be and, you know, the more kind of advanced planning that, that, um, that there should be. Well, Stephanie, thank you so much again for joining us this week. We will chat with you again next week. Okay, thanks, Stacey.